Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth, or maybe Out of Our Depth. So In Depth is where we go every week to talk a little bit more in depth about something that we can't, we don't want to take up too much time in Tesla Time News with. And so these are stories that you kind of have to get a little bit, dive a little deeper. Um, and so that what we're covering today are two stories that we felt needed a little more time to explain. All right, let's start. All right, so the first one is about new battery technology. And this, we hear about this every week and we don't include these stories out every week because there's there's a lot of stories, lot of about, stories them. about them and we only want to tell you about ones that we think have a lot of merit to them. Um, this one's very interesting because 94-year-old John Goodenough, who is a professor in Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin, he's the co-inventor of the lithium-ion battery. Wow. So that brings a lot of credence to what he has to say. Yeah. He's developed the first all-solid-state battery cells that could lead to safer, faster charging, longer lasting rechargeable batteries. So they've actually produced solid state cells with glass electrolytes that are instead of the liquid electrolyte. And mm -hmm. I want Jesse to explain that a little bit, like what the advantage is to that having a solid electrolyte. So this sort of gets rid of the dendrite problem. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's a dendrite? So a dendrite is basically anything that's sort of, well, have you ever seen lightning? I have. So all those little like, the little lightning bits that haven't, you know, actually reached the thing, uh -huh. those all dendritic um, oh, sort that's, of spread. That's okay. what is describing it. In, in a lithium ion battery, um, you can have the anode and the cathode, which are the two ends. Yeah. Um, they go through the electrolyte, but sometimes when you're recharging or, or discharging the battery, um, the, the, that can sort of grow. Um, the anode or the cathode oh, it, in a dendritic sort of formation in and short, connect, in short the battery. Oh, okay. And that's how you can kill a lithium ion battery. So that's what happens after a couple of years to like a, say a laptop battery that you haven't been charging properly. It, it right. Dies. If you've overcharged it or discharged it all the way to zero and then back up to a hundred, like um, so, a lot of wear and tear on the battery that can hurt um, lithium ion batteries. So the glass, um, and, uh, electrolyte will sort of alleviate that problem. It also prevents it from being, um, combustible. So no longer are the lap, you know, are your, you know, your Samsung phone batteries going to explode on you. And oh, sort of that's fireball. a huge. Oh, wow. Okay. So Maria Helena Braga, who is the co-inventor of this new battery, mm -hmm. um, she said about the new glass electrolyte, she said the glass electrolyte allows for the substitution of low cost sodium for lithium. Ooh. Sodium is extracted from seawater that is widely available. Um, and they say that this new battery will be three times as energy dense as typical batteries. Wow. You'll be able to get more than 1,200 cycles with low cell resistance, and it can operate from minus 20 degrees Celsius to under 60 degrees Celsius, and it's non-combustible. Wow, so I mean, these are some really big breakthroughs. I hear so often, oh, you know, battery technology, it's, it's what's holding back EVs, you know, and people assume that it's never going to progress, it's never gonna get better, um, and I think that this is sort of proof of that. And I think that Tesla has been sort of the impetus for a lot of people to um, get into this sort of technology. This is a really good point. I mean, one of the things that happens in technology is that there are fields that are trendy. Mm -hmm. And when fields become trendy, that means that people go to colleges and universities and they start doing their research in it and they start getting into these fields. And for the longest time, batteries have been not sexy. Let's think, let's talk about batteries. Batteries, you've known them for decades. They've been the same thing, been right? A big lead acid car battery, mm -hmm. boring, disgusting, toxic, heavy, gross. Right. Didn't work well. No one wanted to get into batteries. Now batteries are sexy. Right. And so that's attracting tons of new research money and people into the field. And when you get that, that is when you get innovation. And when, that is, right. it's happening daily now. I mean, And we've seen this sort of thing happening with, with um, the internet, with computers mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, like having a bunch of people really interested in computers and video games and all sorts of stuff. You mm -hmm. get into huge huge leaps in technology. You're probably too young to remember this, but when the personal computer came out, a lot of people said, what are people going to do with that? There's right. no programs that run on it. It's still big and clunky and it gets hot and blah, blah, blah. And people who could, who had the vision like Jobs and, and Gates, they could see that there will be cool programs for this. There will be cool uses. We may not know all of them right now, but and look at look at this is one of them right now. Exactly. <laughs> This is the use. And the same is true with batteries. So I just want to point out that these kind of these innovations are going to make a huge leap forward because we're dealing with batteries right now that are just on the cusp of affordable yeah. and just on the cusp of being able to give us what we need. But that's not 
it's not going to just stay this way. It's going to keep getting better. And the, the Gigafactory doesn't have to build the same battery. See, a lot of people think, oh, the Gigafactory just makes this type of battery. No, if there's new changes that come out, you they can, can retool it. They can retool. Right? You, can, you can make anything. I mean, it, a factory is a factory. And as long as you have the, the resources and the technology to mm -hmm. retool the factory to make something else, they can make something else. Right. And I think Tesla has shown that they will always be on that cutting edge of innovation. So I'm excited to see, you know, what steps forward they make in battery technology. Um, it's just going to be so exciting. Now, I didn't cover this next story a couple weeks ago because, uh, well, it kind of for the reasons we're going to explain, but it's Honda's dynamic charging system. Um, they've come up with what they claim is a way to charge cars while they're driving on the roads. And that is very futuristic and very cool. Uh, the reason I didn't cover it is because I don't think it's that practical. But we did get a lot of viewers who commented, hey, why didn't you cover the story? And so we do want to cover it. It's a very cool idea. They could charge, according to their literature, uh, 180 kilowatts, which would be 600 DC, while driving at 96 miles an hour. Wow. And if you think about that, that sounds great. If, you, if I could just be driving down the road and charging at the same time, I would only need a tiny little battery. Right, so your car could be a lot lighter. So it could be a lot more efficient. So I'm all for it, except for one big caveat. It would take a huge infrastructure investment to make sure that almost all roads had this. It would basically mean taking the entire grid and throughout the world putting the grid in the road. Right. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking a block away from me right now, and I'm seeing power lines that are on poles mm -hmm. that have been there for my entire life. Um, we have not upgraded our power grid in the United States for decades. Right. I can't see that this would happen overnight. Um, and so I think the reason why Honda went in this direction is they're so far behind in the battery de uh, department. I guess so, yeah. So I'm thinking they thought to themselves, oh gosh, we can't compete with companies like Tesla with batteries. Let's look for some alternatives. And do you think that's why Toyota and Honda have been looking at hydrogen cells? That's my guess, is that they just don't think they can compete with batteries, or maybe they don't believe in batteries. And so they've been looking at other things. So it's not that I don't like the futuristic idea of being able to charge on the road. I just think that logistically, how in the next five or 10 years would you possibly get enough of this in the roads to actually work? So do you think that you could get into some sort of medium ground where you have a medium sized battery like 100 mile ish range mm -hmm. and then as soon as you get on any of the highways um you're you're charging up on the highway yeah you could i mean we already have plugless technology at home you can pull into your garage and pull over a plugless unit and it will charge your your car wirelessly, that, wirelessly. Yeah. so i'm not saying that it can't happen i just don't know um financially if it's feasible to put that much charging so as you're going 96 miles an hour, um, you need to have lots and miles of, of that road charging your car. So right. we're talking, and it has to be charging lots of cars. Right. So another question I have is, okay, yes, you're putting 180 kilowatts out, but does that get shared among all the cars that are using that stretch of road? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, it, it, you know how much infrastructure it takes to build a supercharger, right? All those transformers, right? That's very true. And so that's at one location for, say, eight cars. If you put this on a highway and now we're all in traffic and we're all sucking up juice, would we only be getting a small amount of juice? Uh, how much, you know, that it just doesn't sound feasible to be able to pump that much juice to that many cars at once. Right. So, and so this is in, this is basically opposed to having a supercharger network, which is pretty much already in place in the United States I, and, and all over the world, different parts of the, of the world. This goes back to our last question about batteries. If it's true that batteries are going to get cheaper, more energy dense, mm -hmm. lighter, mm -hmm. then I think the answer is batteries. Then the answer is basically charge up at a supercharger, charge up at home, and carry that power around with you. Yep. Um, I think that sounds a lot smarter than having the entire road system be a charging system. But I could be wrong. Please comment below if you've got some thoughts about why that would be a better system or some things that I might have missed um, because I'm, I try to be open-minded um, yeah. and I, I don't claim to know all the answers. But I do think that for now, batteries seem to make a lot of sense. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been an episode of In Depth. Um, if you want to see this week's news, you can check it out right here. This comes out before. Right. We're, we're your so day before the news. This link won't even work until uh, <laughs> until Tuesday. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe and also hit the like button. The like button is going to 
Um, tell YouTube to share this video with someone else somewhere around the world so you can share this with someone, some complete stranger who might, you know, find it in their uh, in their YouTube list and say, oh, this looks like an interesting video. That's right. Um, Keep in mind that we're going on a road trip. We're going on a road trip really soon, so that's going to be very exciting. We're going to have more details in a video um, coming up, uh, but we're going all the way to the Florida Keys. Yeah, that's very fun the, trip. Uh, we're going to vlog. We're going to bring the drone. We're going to bring some special things with us that we're not even telling you about yet. Right. So, um, so please support us on Patreon. Um, it is basically a way for you to show your support. Um, just a few bucks a month um, really goes a long way for us. We are just constantly trying to get um, better gear, better equipment, all sorts of stuff to make um, our videos and the news and in-depth uh, more interesting to watch. And don't forget about podcasts. Uh, a lot of our money goes to paying for podcast sites and so forth. So if you would like to listen to this on a podcast, you can go there now and listen on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever your favorite podcast is. And then you, you don't even, have to see our face. That's right. And you can even listen in the car on, on your Tesla to our podcast. That's wow, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know.